Finally, we get to put some wheels on our car. Let's install the front axle. Today we are going to be working off page 9 of the build manual to install the front axle. The front axle is what we connect the front wheels to and then we can finish up the steering. You'll only need your spanners for this build, so over to Steve! So now that we have our steering mechanism mostly in place, what we need to do is have something for it to actually turn. Um, and the first step in getting ready for that is to install our front axle, which is a square tube and it fits underneath the chassis just in front of the steering column and we need to line the holes up so that the large hole at each end is outside of the chassis. And I've already prepared a bolt here with two washers, one small washer and then a large washer and that comes down from above through one of the holes in the chassis and through the axle and then from below we wind on just finger tight, a washer and a nut. If you've got a friend who could have been doing the other side at the same time, uh, I'm going to go around the other side and do that now. So having fitted our front axle, that square tube underneath the car, we need something to attach to that and on each end of that we fit one of these. And this is called a stub axle because it's short and stubby. Um, it has this funny little kink in its shape here. I wonder if Gav can tell us why that is. Well, I can certainly try, but first I need to take us back to the old horse-drawn carriage. You see, their steering system used to have a central pivot on their front axle. This is a really simple design, and at low speeds this is brilliant as it gives you a lot of manoeuvrability. But at high speeds, this steering setup becomes unstable. That's because if we look back at the model, you can see there's a long lever acting on the pivot. So if the wheel was to hit a rock or something, the steering could get knocked out and the carriage could tip over. And that's exactly how the story goes. One day a designer was travelling in a carriage that tips over and they were injured, motivating them to come up with a better solution. And this is what they came up with. They realised that as you go around a corner, let's say right, the inside wheel needs to turn more than the outside wheel. If it didn't, one of the wheels would be sliding instead of rotating, and that's not good for grip or stability. So why does one wheel need to turn more than the other? Well, if we think about the paths the wheels need to take to go around a corner, you'll see that the inside wheel travels on a tighter radius than the outside wheel. You can see this for yourself. If you hold out your hands in front of you when going around a corner, Whichever way you go, the outside arm will always travel a further distance. This steering geometry that allows for one wheel to turn more than the other is known as Ackermann steering. And as you can see, it works if we go both ways. Inside wheel is turning more than the outside wheel. And again turning right, inside wheel turns more than the outside wheel. Now this makes use of each wheel having its own pivot and then being connected by the steering rack, or as we're going to call them, steering arms. Now I'm not going to go too much further into the definition of Ackermann steering. It gets really complicated with some formulas and such, but I just wanted to give you an understanding that the inside wheel needs to turn more than the outside wheel. And if you want to take your experimentation to the next level, you can make one of these templates for yourself and start measuring the difference in the angle between the inside and outside wheel. So in short, the stub axle has that kink in it to allow for Ackermann steering. And Ackermann steering geometry allows the inside wheel to turn more than the outside wheel when going around a corner, which improves stability and grip. It's been quite a simple explanation, but hopefully enough to get you thinking. Anyway, I've taken enough of your time, back to the build. So with our stub axle that uh, Gav has really given us some clever info about this uh, kink here, um, we need to get it attached. So. The two stub axles are handed left and right, so you need to make sure you get them the right way round. If you point the outer bit where the wheel's going to go out from the car, the, this bit should be on top and pointing in towards the centre of the car. So we use a really big bolt for this one, and I've already got a washer on there. That goes down through the front axle, and then we use a brass washer, this yellow metal washer. It allows us. Um, 
acts as a, a bearing so that the uh, axle can turn and then underneath another washer and a nut Oops. now we'll just tighten that up finger tight I'll put the uh, stub axle on the other side and uh, tighten that one up and I'll show you I can tighten this one up 19 millimeter spanners on these ones quite big spanners this time so I'm going to go a ratchet spanner on the top and a ring spanner underneath and there's quite a lot of tightening to do on this one now don't over tighten this one it's really important if you over tighten it I can't turn my steering now so the trick is to tighten up until it's a bit stiff and then just slacken it off very slightly and check to see if that's moving it's still a little bit stiff just a tiny bit more all right. still a bit more and there we've got a nice free movement there but what we don't want is lots of up and down movement it's actually a really good idea to put a bit of lubrication in there because that's where all the force and friction comes into play on this part so we want as little friction as possible there so a little bit of grease um, either side of that washer when you in install it originally would have been a good idea. I've not done it today but probably should have done. We tied up our steering arms because we paused uh, at one point in our build so we've got the cable tied here. What we need to do now is whilst supporting the steering arm remove that cable tie, cut that off, put it to one side somewhere safe and then we take our bolt with the washer down through the tail of the stub axle and then bring that across to the rod end and remember that we when we place these rod ends on the steering arms we screwed them a set number of turns just to get our steering adjustment roughly right we can then take that washer and a nut and do that up finger tight so I've attached the steering arm to the other side. Now, uh, if we turn the steering wheel, both stub axles turn, which is really good. And I just need to tighten this up now um, so we can actually make on, move on to the next step. Now, with this one, you can tighten this up fully because the center part of the rod end will, will pivot and move and allow that to turn. So there we go. I have here a, a spare steering arm with a nut and a rod end and you'll notice that the rod end and the nut can turn separately at the moment even though it looks like they're very close together. The purpose of this nut is so that we can actually lock the rod end and stop it rotating on the steering arm and we'll do this in a moment on the car but it's clearer if we do it on this example here. So what I've got to do is I've got to tighten the locking nut that plain nut up to the rod end and i'm just going to rest it on the side of the car here for a moment and with two spanners you'll notice that on the rod end there are actually two flats that you can put a spanner on even though it's not like a hex nut i put my spanner there and one on the nut get that on and then turn them to lock against each other and now i cannot turn that by hand at all that's locked and it can't come undone and that means that your steering is not going to fall apart when you're racing now I've just demonstrated on our spare steering arm tightening up the lock nuts and there's actually four of them to do uh, one on each end of each of the two steering arms so if it, this is free to turn turn it by hand up to the rod end place your spanner on the flats of the rod end and then with another spanner and both open-ended spanners this time on the nut and actually turn that and lock it and then just check and now I can't undo that now the important thing is to remember to do all four of those so go to the other end of this arm at the center point where you'll find another lock nut just past the center point you'll find another one on the other arm and then go to the matching one on the other side for this one so 
to finish off our front end steering, what we need is a wheel on each side. And to hold that on, we will have a washer, which has a big hole in the middle, and what we call a linch pin. I'll cover that in a moment. With your wheels, you want the ones that have this black ring in the centre. But inside here, we've got what we call bearings, and actually, it's greasy as well. So, sticking your fingers in there, you're going to get greasy fingers. So, be warned, it's best not all. Wear gloves if you're going to do that, maybe. Clearly, that's going to go onto our stub axle, and it should just slide on quite nicely, but you might need to rotate it. There we go. And it's always best to have this valve, which is going to put more air on the outside. It's easier to access. So, having got your wheel on, then place your washer over the axle as well. That's ready for our linchpin, which is the thing that retains it actually onto the axle. Now, words of warning this is a sprung clip. Right? Flex this and let go. You can hear it snapping shut. You catch your fingers in there, it will hurt. Right. You've been warned. The best way to put this on put the little tip. This tip of the pin down there into the top of the hole on the axle, then pull on both sides of the ring and push down, and then let go of the ring, and it's all done. And there you go, a nice freely spinning wheel. Repeat that on the other side, and then that's the mechanics for your front of your car all finished. And that's the end of this video. If you need any further assistance with the Green Power project, please always feel free to email or call the office. We also have some brilliant community groups where teams share their experiences and expertise with each other. It's a wonderful place for collaboration, so don't miss out. All of the information you need is in the description down below. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like and maybe even a subscribe. Pretty please? Still, plenty of building left to be done, so I'll catch you on the next one.